Wonderful. So here we are. This is the uh, video. So the video lecture for chapter six. Um, we're going to be talking about debt and uh, liabilities. So uh, debt service funds in particular. So here are some things that we're going to be covering in this lecture video. Make sure to get the uh, letters up on the top right hand of the slides as we go through this. So here we are. So we're, we're explaining uh, what types of liabilities uh, are right there are and how they're classified. Uh, we're also going to be talking about journal entries for specific debt uh, issuances. And um, we're going to be talking about note disclosures as well for these things. So note disclosures are things that are required uh, to accompany the financials, right? And so we're, we'll also talk about uh, how these things are reported. Um, we'll talk also about debt, debt margin and overlapping debt um, through this video. So basically just how debt is matured and, um, and managed. And then um, we have different types of debt service funds as well. And we're going to be talking about the journal entries that go with along with those. Okay, so um, here, the, so debt is a common thing. It's kind of goes along with a government for the most part. Okay, super traditional uh, governmental bonds or something that are uh, had by not only federal and state governments, but also local governments like cities uh, and counties. And so we, we also talk about, so as part of this, uh, interest is also something that's part of uh, debt financing. In some situations, governments set up uh, debts where, um, or, or government bonds so that the tax uh, laws that govern interest taxation uh, exempt most of the interest that's created through government financing. So if you're somebody that wants to invest and you invest in government debt, then you can have uh, interest, a tax-free interest earnings. Is So it's kind of a nice deal that only the government can like kind of make those things up because, I mean, they collect the taxes. They can say what has special tax treatment. And, and obviously it gives them a benefit on um, investments to say, hey, our stuff is tax-free, right? Gives them a little bit of an unfair advantage on some of this, some of the investment side, but it's also beneficial to the public as well because there's a lot of good um, externalities through government projects like schools and and things that deal with uh, infrastructure improvement and those type of things. All right, and, and they're typically low interest rates, so governments uh, definitely have to pay lower interest, lower risk, lower interest is kind of the way it works along with those. Okay, so uh, general long-term liabilities uh, are often uh, dealt with in uh, in specific um, funds, right? So these are governmental funds, not necessarily... Um, government-wide, but we also deal with government-wide activities, uh, or we we deal with the uh, these transactions uh, being recorded in governmental activities, and they're also recorded in in the in the governmental funds, specifically in funds that are called uh, debt service funds. Okay, so they're separated out from like the general fund, right? And from capital projects funds and and those type of things, so they're they're separated out for uh, on purpose to track um, because most ge general like funds, right? And when we're doing fund accounting, most of that is done short term, right? So if you have a long term debt, you're going to want to have these things tracked over time, and so you set up a fund that stays open as the as the debt is being paid off, right? So each annual uh, revenue and expenditure that comes together with the debt service is recorded annually in the debt service fund. Uh, but over the government-wide, the actual 
um, the actual amortization or payoff of the debt is tracked. Okay, and so here's here's kind of some of the forces sources I should say so the things that generate long-term liabilities for governments so bonds notes and capital leases right so these are some of the things that uh, generate long-term liabilities okay so uh, from year to year things that um, that are more like operating activities that these often these financing activities help uh, address are going to be pensions, right? So there are long-term bonds set up to help pay off pensions. Okay, there's also uh, claims and judgments like legal things that are uh, a lot of times there are notes or or different financing that helps pay off those kind of claims that are made. Environmental issues, there's something called a sinking fund, right? Or those type of things where where Governments will pay into those long-term financing options to pay off uh, like an environmental issue like a city may have like a city dump. They know that they're going to have, they're going to run the city dump for 30 years and at the end of the 30 years, they're then going to have to take care of all that junk, right? And so that's, that's something that can be planned for long-term uh, financing type things. All right. So, so the long-term liabilities are also, along with the debt service funds, they're also recorded in governmental activity records, so government-wide activity records, okay? They're also, they also can be recorded in what, what are called proprietary funds or private purpose trust funds, right? Especially like um, pensions and things like that, that are, are long-term uh, type issues where the revenue from the service isn't from the debt isn't necessarily used to buy a capital asset it may be to um, set up a specific type of a trust fund okay so when we when we set up a long-term debt uh, the, it's often accompanied by a detailed schedule of changes in the notes, right, to the financial statement. So these are the notes or the disclosures that are done. So even though you have a line item uh, on your uh, financial statements, right, or in your fund uh, for journal entry, they should be accompanied by notes, specific, uh, specific schedules that record payoff and current uh, current requirements of the liability, those types of things. Okay, so if if the debt are recognized, so this is an important part, right? By a uh, proprietary or private purpose trust fund is is also backed by the full faith and credit of the government. So even though it's in special specific per, uh, funds, really the debt when it's in an entity is really in the end. Uh, it is backed by the government and by their taxing tax base. So the tax base really, really shows the uh, the limits there, and and the debt limit basically, right? So a lot of times there are laws set up. So we see this at the federal government, right? Like the debt ceiling. They're always talking about the debt ceiling and those type of things. Certain state and local governments also have maybe a percentage. Of debt that they that, can, that they can have uh, per, a percentage of like let's say for example percentage of the budget or percentage of overall assets uh, or those type of things as a debt uh, limitation. So you it's it's kind of a ceiling right that won't allow uh, like if we go if we draw this as a ceiling right so this is a ceiling and it won't allow the debt to go above it right so the ceiling keeps things down or keeps things from going above okay so here and then here's the debt margin right so this is the debt limit or the debt ceiling it's the difference between the debt limit and the outstanding indebtedness okay so we've got the ceiling up here right okay so here's our ceiling and uh, we're up to let's say we're up to this level 
right here. And so this gap in the middle is the margin or the extra amount. Margin in economics is often referred to as extra. So any extra amount left in the uh, debt limit is called the debt margin. Okay. So there's often um, debt issuances that overlap or for similar purposes, right? Or bonds, right? And so these, these uh, kinds of debts overlap and a lot of the overlap is also relative to like taxation, right? Because a lot of bonds and different things are paid through tax revenue. Uh, therefore, uh, the uh, tax revenue often is split up into these separate pots, but really it's the same people that are paying for the debt um, through their taxation, okay? Um, so, so here's a debt service fund. So this is really, we're talking about a new kind of fund in this chapter. Fund, I should say, uh, which is fun, I guess. But it's, so it's called a debt service fund, right? So, so the debt service fund can allow multiple issuances. So we don't set up necessarily one fund for each bond issuance, but we track the bond issuances separately within the same debt service fund. So typically there's one debt service fund and we can track several issuances of uh, debt uh, separately within the fund, right? So here's the debt service fund and then we have all of our issuances inside of that. So debt service fund. All right, does that make sense? Um, so, so here, a lot of times, like debt issuances. So, so sometimes, like we uh, we throw out the bond here, and some debt issuances say, okay, after ten years, the due date, on the due date, you're gonna have to pay off the principal and all the interest. Everything's due at the end. So you don't have these little payments throughout, right? So it just depends on what type of financing it is or what type of bond. And so even though maybe things are due at the end here instead of throughout, governments will oftentimes, which they should, and a lot of, a lot of this is uh, governed by law and policy, is they should be planning on those payments. Every fiscal year, they should be putting things aside in anticipation of the due date okay so in this case um, we, we have um, revenues that could be going in and not coming out we w whatever it is we need to uh, budget for and account for it as a separate entity so so we need to need to have these inflows and outflows everything set up appropriations those, those kind of things budgeted for So, so one, one of the interesting things about a debt service fund is this. So interest payable, right? This is not tracked because it accumulates, right, over time, and it and may even span periods or fiscal years. This is tracked in the government-wide statement. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so here here are several uh, different types of bonds. So here's regular, deferred, serial bonds, annuity, serial bonds, all these things. Okay, so these these are bonds that um, are going to be set up specifically uh, for, um, and, and there's several different types, right, of these serial bonds. But uh, really, what they're what they're set up for is um, so this so these serial bonds, as they're set up, so these are going to be uh, taxed base serial bonds. Okay, that they're going to be set up, and some of them can be like balloon type payments. So so some of these are going to be balloon type type payments. Uh, some of them are going to be deferred serial bonds, which are definitely set up uh, by at at the end of the year, right? So at least at the end of the year, end of the period, um, annuity type several serial bonds. These are like our sinking funds in preparation for 
um, a required uh, payment at the end. Um, and so some of these things, so these are all different types of uh, all different types of serial bonds that are set up as as opposed to uh, term bonds, which are just set uh, for certain uh, term uh, amounts of time. OK, so now now what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about some of the journal entries that accompany a regular serial bond. Okay, so so the serial bond, uh, as we're going to list up here. So with each entry, we're going to list where the, what fund that these entries go into, right? Okay. So the very first, what what this uh, what this is, this is our uh, these are our budgets. Okay, so this is the budget. We don't budget necessarily in the government wide. Or governmental activities uh, side of things, but we do budget within our debt service fund. Okay, and so we we budget this much revenue, we budget uh, the appropriations, and then we also have uh, the six percent here, which is also a component of uh, residual equity to be transferred from the fire. So for this particular particular one, let's say, for example, we were building a fire station and uh, we had a capital uh, project fund set up and this was uh, the fund balance left over, right? The residual equity. So that's coming from like, let's say the the capital, the fire capital projects, right? So this is capital or stuff we did last uh, this is stuff we did last chapter, right? Is our capital projects fund. And so with our Smithville project, anything left over in the, the street fund, I think it was Elm Street, right? We're going to have to transfer that equity over to a debt service fund. And it'll look something like this. It, it could be set up in, in budget format as well. Okay, so here's our actual revenues coming in here. So we have our revenues and our cash coming in. Uh, and this is maybe this is this is uh, something like, for example, this is a sales tax collection. OK, specifically a sales tax sp specifically for whatever debt this is that we incurred. Right. Uh, th identical things happen in uh, governmental activities. So this really is the same transaction in two funds. Okay, so here's the actual transfer. Here's the actual transfer that we had budgeted in. So that's something that we need to need to put in there. And then we have our payment. So this is a payment that we're making on the bond. Okay, so this is bond and interest. And there's our cash going out the door. Governmental activities, it's, it's really the same. This is really the same transaction, different funds. Okay. Remember, interest payable is recorded in governmental activities, not in the uh, debt service fund. So as time passes, time passes, interest becomes payable, right? So our payable is generated through time passing, right? So as time passes, we owe this interest, interest okay? So that's why we record a interest payable. All right, so here again is year two, um, or the actually this is end of year one, right? So this is our closing entries. Okay, so we're closing this out. So we close our budget. Okay, so here's close. And then we close our revenues and expenditures. This is in the debt service fund. We don't close governmental activities. And then now we move on to the second year. So here we are in the second year. Okay, and so this is a different debt service fund, maybe something else. Okay, so here's here's our budgets. Here's the uh, the balance being moved over, right? Okay, to help cover the uh, this one specifically is for something like 